all right now uh, we were discussing about the velocities in a given cross section in that deformed state so i'll draw the section of the aerofoil i'll write first please note this is your y2 axis this is your z2 axis x2 is going in okay and we had the velocity components ut later i'll write what it that is the velocity along y2 direction but since it is coming towards it minus sign is there that is why I put the ut this way and then there is an u p which is the perpendicular that is along the z 2 direction which is again a negative quantity minus sign that minus sign I have taken here. Then there is the u r there is a radial which you may I will put a circle here it is u r velocity going into the boat all are air velocity. Now your u t we wrote last time it is essentially we make an assumption omega r please note beta is small. So, cosine beta is 1 sin beta is beta and lambda is also small based on that we will write the assumption this is omega r plus mu omega capital R we will write it as ok. So, that I take out this omega r outside and write it as r bar plus mu. So, this is basically this symbolically because non dimensional u t because later I will use u bar t everywhere. Similarly, you go to u p, u p is actually minus that is why I have taken that u p becomes lambda omega r plus and which you write it as again omega r lambda plus there is a mu beta ok which you call it as omega r u p bar ok. So, that it becomes easy for uh, later representation ok u p bar u t bar ok. What he is saying is that this derivative yeah, since you have brought it that is good. It is a time derivative we take, but here I non dimensionalize this. Yeah, what you said is correct. So, there is a omega divided, ok. And if I write it in this fashion, what will happen is ok, even though this is that, if you want, I can write this as a star just to denote this is a derivative with respect to okay, omega t. Then what will I do? So, you can write it like this d over dt is 
omega ok. Now, this becomes non dimensional time which is our symbol ok. Is it clear? Therefore, in all our later things the derivatives are with respect to non dimensional time, but I do not put the star I use the same symbol as dot ok. So, take it that the time derivative is with respect to this omega d t because I want to take out omega outside because in our operation omega is a constant all these derivations ok. Is it clear? And then you will have the u r term basically we are uh, we neglect <coughs> one particular term which is we know that that is mu omega r cosine psi but I neglect the beta small. So, this becomes lambda beta. So, product of lambda and beta I am neglecting that term please understand. So, this essentially becomes mu and you have omega r is there that is that is ok. Now, you got all the expressions for your velocities you have to go back and write your uh, lift and drag and if you have aerodynamic moment you have to use the moment, but for our calculation we assume that the aerodynamic moment is 0. So, we neglect that term. Now, this is our and this is the theta which is the pitch input given by the pilot. Now, you have u t u p. So, there is an induced because this is your you take a this is your resultant velocity resultant velocity is square root of Okay. And this angle you call it phi which is tan phi is okay. if you want to compute numerically because please understand these are the expressions every section this is changing ok and all these quantities are we assume lambda is a constant that is the most important thing. If you want to put the lambda also varies along the radial along the azimuth then you should have a model for that that is your Dries model, but right now we assume lambda is constant over the entire disk you need to calculate this that means uh, with the psi every time instant things are changing ok. So, what we do is we further make assumptions here the further assumption is I say my u p which is this term ok I assign some order lambda is small and the flap is also small and this is a flap angle is small. Therefore, you see all these three terms they are of the same order because mu is forward speed that is we cosine alpha by omega r a you switch off ok and 
that is a little higher term and that is sitting here. So, I always say my u tangent is much larger than u p much larger I am just make this statement it is true as you go r far away, but when you come near the root that assumption may not be valid, but still I make that assumption that means uh, I am going to write that is all and this is p is because u p is small therefore, u p over u t is small and tan phi I call it as phi. Okay. Now, my angle of attack alpha effective that is that becomes theta minus phi which is theta minus u p over u t very simple. Now, I have this alpha now I can get the lift expression drag expression lift is perpendicular to the resultant flow there I will take this. So, my lift is this is my lift and the drag is this is my drag. Okay. Actually, perpendicular means uh, well it looks like that, but it is okay. This is perpendicular to not to the card, but to the resultant velocity. Okay. So, this angle is phi, this angle is phi. Uh, it should not uh, it should not look like okay. So, that hmm, this is lift lift and drag. So, your lift expression is half I am writing approximately because I already make this assumption u square I may take this, but I am going to put it half rho even though exactly it is u square sorry u square card C L the lift per unit span, but I am writing this as which I can simplify as let me erase this part okay. half rho u t square c c l alpha that is lift curve slope which we call it a into theta minus p. Okay. This is my lift expression now and drag is half rho u square c c d 0 drag coefficient, but here again I make that assumption that u is u t. So, this also becomes half rho u t square c c d 0. Okay. Now, I have lift expression drag expression I need to get the forces now forces I get it along f z 2. Okay. Maybe now I erase this part okay. So, I will use only u p u t expression fully. So, my f z 2 is l cosine phi d sin phi. And f y 2 is minus of because y 2 is this way. So, that will be minus l sin phi plus
these are forces in Z2 and Y2. Okay. I have to convert them into Y1, X1, Y1, Z1, finally transfer them back to X, Y, Z which are basically the hub coordinates because if you remember last class we said this is Z is up and this is the projection this we said this is Y1 and this is my and then of course this to X2, Y2. So, we had uh, X1, this is Z1 and we put this is our blade really. This is X2 and this is Z2, this is beta. Okay. You have this transformation. So, what we have to do is you get the force in X2, Y2, Z2 coordinate transfer the forces back to x1, y1, finally back to x and y. That means, you are doing blade sectional load, this is sectional load the per unit length. If you want to get the total load acting at the root of the blade, you will integrate this along the pan of the blade, then you will say this is my root load on the blade. You can give it in x 1 y 1 direction that is root load in the undeformed rotating coordinate system. But if you want hub load, because the x 1 y 1 keeps on rotating. So, you have to get the hub load means hub load is along fixed direction x and y and z. But if you want to all our expressions, so in the design when you go, you need to know what is the blade load, then you also need to know what is the hub load, because blade load you require for the design of the blade. But when you translate into hub, this is not the only blade, you will have if you have 4 or 5 blades, every blade you have to add. So, when you go to the hub load, you have to put a summation of all the blades. Okay. So, each blade contribution you will take, transform all of them along x and y, then you will say this is my hub load. Otherwise, each blade will have its own load. Now, we make certain assumptions, we are going to do one by one and then finally, we will write the hub load expression. Okay. Now, let us take the uh, we make now approximation this is what we are doing now lot of approximations which are done here. So, that you can get uh, something like a closed form solution otherwise if you do not make any assumption that is all it will be left like this. Okay. Then I will say you integrate from some aerodynamic section where it starts some root offset to tip of the blade and you get the loads transform it put it. Otherwise, you cannot get a nice little expression. Okay. This is the reality if you want to really do practical blades they stop right here they want even you do not even have to make if you are doing numerically you do not make even this. Okay. But please remember I am making here C L is C L alpha this fine, but how C L alpha varies? C L alpha can be a function of Mach number. Okay. So, as you go along the span Mach number is changing that means your C L alpha will change and C D yes that will also change. So, you need to take actual aerofoil characteristic. 
okay, how it varies with Mach number, how it varies with angle of attack for the given aerofoil. This is what is done because this they call it polar, that is all, that is the aerodynamic polar, but it is a static data. That means, you put the aerofoil, whatever aerofoil which you have chosen for your rotor blade cross section, put it in a wind tunnel, get the data. And in the earlier days, they were using NACA 0012, etcetera, symmetric aerofoil, but nowadays nobody uses that. Each company has its own aerofoil, they have some name they give and the rotor blade aerofoil they design and they use that and they will know the aerodynamic data of that aerofoil, please understand. This is a static data only. Now, if the angle of attack exceeds the stall, so blade will stall, so you have to take the stall value. Okay. That is why I am saying actual blade calculation to highly idealized situation, what we are doing, we throw away. C L alpha is constant, C D naught is going to be constant. I make U P as small comparison to U T. Then I do all these assumptions. Now I get this. Here also I make further assumption. Okay. The further is since phi is small, I will write this as Okay. I am making, I am throwing this out because d phi, d is anyway small, phi is also small, so I neglect it. When I go here, this will be minus L phi plus d. Okay. Now, you see L phi, this is d is drag which is due to the profile drag C D naught. This term comes from lift that is why you call this as the induced drag. So, you have in the fold you have induced drag and you have profile drag. Okay, two expressions, this is per section. So, keep doing and integrate the whole thing, but integrate before integration you have to transfer this to f y 1 and that one. Now, that also made lot of assumptions again. Okay. Now, we will come to one by one. What is f? I think I should, can I erase this part? Because this is not necessary now. Okay. Because you know the transformation which I wrote uh, last time, that is E x, I am actually I make the transformation u This is what I wrote last time. Okay. This is what was written last time and the another expression was E x 2 y 2 z 2. We wrote cosine beta 0 E x 1 E y y 1 E z 1. Okay. Now, I have the forces in this direction z 2 y 2 they are here. 
3 2 y 2 x 2 actually x 2 will you have a force? Well, you can have a force that is a drag term because it is along the span and uh, how do you get that expression that I will tell you later right now we say there is no x 2. So, you can get E x 1 because you can this is all orthogonal transformation. So, you will have just to cosine beta 0 just transpose ok. E x 2 E y 2 E z 2 ok. Now, I have f z 2 f y 2. So, f y 1 and E x 1 that means, I will have f x 1 is minus sin beta force along f z 2. So, minus beta in the sense sin beta I am writing it as sorry let me put it clearly minus sin beta f z 2 I am writing it as minus beta f z 2 which is minus beta L from there. Okay. And I, I know the lift expression and then f y 1 is nothing but f y 2, there is no change because that is only 1 and your f z 2, f z 1 is beta into E x 2, there is no force. So, cosine beta f z 2 that is just f z 2 which is just simply L. Okay. That means, I am making beta is very small. So, I get this. Now, you go back with these three because you know that lift is nothing but f z 2 that is all. You go back and get the transformation in the let me erase this part this is not now required along x y z this is hub fixed. So, you will again make the transformation cosine psi minus sin psi 0 here you will have what x 1 y 1 z 1. Okay. Now, you know f x 1 f y 1 f z 1 put them here you get the f x y z. Okay. So, you will write f x cosine psi f x 1. So, minus beta L cosine psi. And then sin psi y 1. So, minus sin psi f y 1, f y 1 is nothing but f y 2. Okay. Which if you want to write everything in terms of minus what is this? This is sin psi f y 1 is f y 2 and minus and minus will become plus this will become L phi plus d. Okay. 
you got it huh? now then f y sin psi e x 1 f x 1 that is minus beta l sin psi and then cosine psi f y 1. So, you will have plus cosine psi f y 1 and f y 1 you know minus of that. So, this will become minus beta l sin psi minus cosine psi l phi plus d. Okay. And then f z that is nothing but f z is f z 1, f z 1 is f z 2 which is l. So, you will write your f z is f z 1 which is f z 2 which is basically left. So, you see this is my full expression of transformed load along the hub fixed non rotating coordinate system okay, per section. Basically, all these things you have to now get because this is the hub load. So, you need to integrate over the span of the blade and then you must also add the value from each blade because when you get the hub load every blade will give you some load that blade will depends on where its location is ok. Now, you see my hub loads even if you look at the simple expression these loads are functions of psi that means with position psi is omega t that means my hub load is a function of time it is not a constant you understand. So, as the blade goes round my load is not fixed it is varying with time. So, how do we really proceed in the entire formulation what we make in this course is hey let me look at what is the mean value of the load ok mean value of my hub load that is what mean value means I take average one revolution the blade will go you will have some load it will be time varying then I take the mean value that is all what about the time variation I throw it out I do not even write that because the time variation quantity essentially represents the vibratory part ok. So, the helicopter the moment it starts moving forward you will have a mean value and you will have a vibratory value and vibratory part I neglect that is why helicopters have to vibrate if it is not vibrating it is not a helicopter in the sense it is very very crazy vibration that is where other problems start how do I reduce vibration etcetera etcetera. So, that is a different part which will not be part of this course at all vibration is a please note a major problem in helicopters ok that comes purely because of this time variation in the load. But then you are flying how you are flying is you use the mean value of the load. So, you say what is my mean f z mean lift if that value is equal to the weight ok I get I support the mean value is equal to the weight it is flying, but then it will be shaking and flying ok and same thing happens f x f y everywhere, but this is only sectional load please understand you have to get the moment because airfoil theory gives you 
only lift drag and pitching movement pitching movement i said take it as zero that is for a section but when i take the load at a particular section i am transferring this load to the hub so that will give you hub movements also because in the root like a bending movement okay bending movement will come so you have a essentially you have a lift force you have a drag force okay the lift into this that will give you flap flap bending moment for the blade okay each blade will give its own flap bending moment you have to sum up all and get the hub <coughs> moment okay we will come to the moment part a little later and then the drag force will give you lead lag which is a torque okay so what we will do is we will write the torque expression later we will write the bending moment expression so you see at the hub if i integrate all of them i get the force and r cross f because you will moment is vector is and r is you take it as whatever location so into f f you put all this f and take the cross product r is r into ex2 because r ex2 is what you have and if you want to convert to ex1 you can transfer it and then take a that x1 y1 product cross product and then transfer it to hub loads so you will have at the hub three forces three moments okay and these expressions you need to get they are pretty uh, messy long expressions finally i will give only very simplistic stuff with all assumptions made all integration done everything okay now let us go back to writing first expression which is lift okay because lift is my thrust i am going to write that expression first so one by one we will write the expressions okay so i will write that and then we will non dimensionalize all those loads let me erase this part completely i think this is not required so i erase this your lift fz1 is nothing but fz2 which is lift so i will uh, take it as this is half rho we made an approximation that is ut square please understand i am putting like this card cl alpha cl alpha you may use or cl alpha you replace by the symbol a so this is uh, what we use a sometimes okay and then multiplied by theta minus okay now take the ut square inside you will get half rho c a i am putting cl alpha as symbol a theta ut square minus up ut and you know ut you have non dimensionalized with a omega r outside so take out that omega r you will write half rho omega capital r square c a it will be theta ut bar square minus up bar ut bar okay okay i am taking omega r outside because finally i will non dimensionalize the whole stuff okay let me erase this part now okay 
Now, I just replace the expressions here. This becomes, please note, I am taking half rho C A omega capital R whole square substitute for U T bar. U T bar is R bar plus theta lambda plus R bar beta dot. Please understand this dot is with respect to non dimensional time derivative. I do not put a star okay. plus beta mu psi multiplied by So, this is my lift sectional lift please understand sectional lift. If I want my total thrust, thrust is number of blades I have to take. I assume now each blade I must add okay. it is essentially a summation it is not an integration because at a particular time one blade will be in one azimuth another blade will be in another azimuth okay. it will be here another one can be there third one can be here and if you have four bladed it may be like this. At every given instant this psi will get replaced by psi k and I must put summation k running from 1 to number of blades. <coughs> okay. That is what I have to do 1 to n where I must replace here all the psi by every blade and this blade what I must integrate from 0, 0 or some root offset to B r, it will be d r, you understand, is it clear, but this is not dimensionalized. So, I will actually take a r bar, okay. this will become b, this will become e and one r will come out, that r I will take it here, is it okay? and then this is a summation at every instant. Now, please I am just slowly look just with the simple expression, you still do not know what is theta, because theta is theta naught plus theta 1 c cosine psi plus theta 1 s sin psi, that is the pilot input. What about beta? You do not know beta. So, you are assuming, now this is the you assume I know all these quantities. That means, I am essentially saying theta is cosine psi plus theta 1 s sin psi and beta is I am writing like this cosine psi plus beta 1 s sin psi plus I neglect all the other terms. Okay. I am throwing away everything, I assume only this motion even though technically it is not correct, you have to take all the terms, but up to what harmonics you will go, these are all real practical problems. Okay. Let us take up to one harmonic. Now, you see this I have to put it here here, here, here okay. and then I will have a long expression integrate from this to this then sum it up. So, instead of doing now I make uh, one more assumption that all the blades as they go around the azimuth 
everything does the same thing, same motion. That means, I assume all blades are identical okay, and the response is also identical. Yeah, Identical means, you take one blade, it goes around the azimuth, right? That means, it will have some flap res response. That response is same for all the blades. Okay. And this is what is in the practical thing they call it, all the blade first identical in terms of mass, mass distribution both. Please understand mass of the blade you can keep it, then mass distribution how the mass per unit length is distributed. So, when you really manufacture all the blades are not identical, there will always be some difference in weight. Aerodynamic shape has to be identical that we take it yes, mass, but what they do is they measure the blade weight. If the blade mass is not same, they have to add weight. So, they will have boxes where they will put some extra weight some 200 grams something like that. Make the blade mass is same as well as first moment of the blade mass with respect to the root that is all they can do. Because you can have mass is what? Mass of the blade integral m d r from 0 to r you can take it. First moment, first moment I call it m x c g this is one integral m r d r okay, 0 to capital R, then i blade 0 to capital R m r square d r. All of them must be same, then only you say they are identical, okay. otherwise there will be some difference, but in reality there will be difference. Now, these differences will appear when you really fly, that means no two blade is same, but they have some criteria how much I allow, that is why I am just deviating now, there is something called a tracking balancing. Balancing is balance the mass of all the blades, because otherwise if one blade is less mass or different than the other one then you know that from basic vibration you will have a shaking because the mass is CG of the blade system is not right at the center. So, what it will do? It will start shaking, you will have vibration. So, this is balancing the blade. Tracking is as the blade goes around you keep every blade some pitch angle. Every blade should when at a particular azimuth angle they should come to the same response. Okay, but what will happen is if you look at that, uh, if the if all the fans are rotating, if one plant blad is going up, another one is going down, at the same location, that means they are not doing the same response. But this is called uh, tracking. So how do they do? Is they adjust some pitch angle of the blade, individual blade. Some blade goes up a little higher, then they'll say, oh, reduce the pitch of that particular blade or they have a trailing edge tab. Usually most of the blades if you see they will have something like this. Okay, I am just there will be a fixed tab, small tab will be there. They adjust the angle fixed, it is set, it is really riveted and they just adjust it a little bit. So, that all the blades almost track and they give some allowance, Okay, this much is there some engineers, I will tell you, their specialization is only this, keep tracking balancing, because if the track and balance is not proper, when they fly it will have lot of vibration. Okay. So, you balance it, then again fly, of course, you will always have vibration, even if they are all balanced, you will have vibration, if they are not balanced, you will have more vibration. Okay. This is a real practical problems. Now, for us easy, everything is identical, 
So, all blades perform the same response, identical blades, identical motion. Okay. Now, what I will do is the moment I say everything is identical, this is per a, at a particular instant, this is the load. I am going to get mean values of the loads, mean values some hinge offset B R. Okay. Mean value is 0 to 2 pi 1 by 2 pi n. So, this is the mean value of one blade. If I have n number of blades, I will simply multiply by n. Okay, you got it. So, what I am doing is I am assuming all blades do same motion. Therefore, I am just multiplying by one blade effect multiplied by n. Huh? Yeah, deep uh, sorry, there is a deep sorry. Okay. So, this is what I finally get and this I have to do for all the loads. Please understand I am writing using only thrust because I do not want to write everything again and again. If I explain for one, the same thing is valid for f x same thing is valid for f y, same is valid for moment and torque etcetera everything. Okay. Now, this is what I will do. Now, in the non dimensionalization, so now let me erase all of that. I knock out everything because I hope you have all these expressions that is all. this thrust is a function of time agreed or not because this is what is coming here this entire expression comes here okay agreed and it is a function of psi psi is omega t k i have to put wherever psi is there i must put a psi k right replace psi by psi k where psi k is 2 pi over n k minus 1 n is the number of blades. So, at a particular instant each blade will have different lift value depending on where it is even though there are is fixed assuming because this is a location of the position from the root right you take the same r bar in all the blades at a particular instant they will have different lift values okay what you are doing is you are integrating for one blade fully after integration you are summing it up, summing it up in each blade value you integrate separately then add at that time that is a particular time <laughs> you got it then again next instant again you do it that means you are this t is basically a function of time, time is non dimensional is psi agreed. Now, I say hey, I am going to have oscillatory force, I am going to make this is T mean that is 1 over 2 pi 0 to 2 pi, is it clear? That is for one blade I have done. Okay. Now, I make an assumption that all the blades are same, identical. Therefore, I simply multiply, I do not go and then add every time each blade and then calculate it. Okay. I will not do in this case, I will simply calculate for one blade 
take the mean value multiply by n. It is not that I will go and do for actually in my code what we have developed here aero elastic code we do each blade separately. then you do, but it is technically same, it is basically same. You take this t, t mean what will you do? You integrate 1 over 2 pi to 2 pi, that is basically the same thing, that is what I am saying. Okay. But if you really want to capture the vibratory load also, then you have to do this. Yeah, lot of you will have a T, every T that is why the blade you keep moving it every 4 degrees or 5 degrees like that and then keep integrating. When one blade moves, other blade also moves and other blade aerodynamics is different. When it comes to on the retreating side, this blade may be stalling some sections. That means, you have to take that stall value of that lift into account. Okay. So, we, when we write the big aeroelastic code which we have developed, uh, of course, the HL is interested and then now it is a collaboratively we are adding it. It is a very comprehensive aeroelastic analysis. There we do every section of all the blades and we do not assume all blades are same, even though for computation we do. Otherwise, even if you want to change the blade properties a little bit, you can do it. The flexibility is there in the program, but industrial code they assume all blades are same, nobody does that and after that it is all minor adjustments they do, because it is, it is see practical problems sometimes may not be easy to translate into theoretical modeling because sometimes it is very, very complicated realistic problems are. So, we make lot of assumptions because you need to get some values if you want to fly. See, if you really see the history of you all heard the history of helicopter development, all these things came much later, all the mathematical modeling as well much later after the helicopter will start flying. Okay. But now, you try to understand the problems, okay. what is the reason for this problem? how do you fix it, how do you improve it, okay. but improvements have happened substantially. Okay. Is this clear? This is, yeah. yeah, yeah. But vibratory load you can't get it, mean value fine and that is what is done in practical things. So, if the mean values you capture correctly, you can go ahead and design. Vibratory values always problem, because the real aerodynamics you do not know, you understand, because the, the flow is so complicated, your inflow you have to get properly, because if your inflow is wrong, your angle of attack is wrong, if angle of attack is wrong, everything is wrong, you understand and it is a time varying, it is not a, it is an oscillating aerofoil. Okay, unsteady aerodynamics you have to use, but usually industry will use uh, just uh, steady values, but we have a model for unsteady aerodynamics. So, we have incorporated a stall model, but again that is empirical. We try to fit a curve for the dynamic stall and then take that, it is a differential equation. So, I get my C L C D C M from a differential equation. If my blade is oscillating in a particular fashion, at a particular time what will be the value of my CL, what will be my drag, what will be my moment, okay, at an instant. So, usually the lift drag moment are not just functions of angle of attack, they are also functions of time variation in angle of attack, you understand time variation in angle of attack also will come and second derivative also may be there. So, these are uh, more uh, I would say advanced modeling approaches, but even then that is not precise, but you make some assumptions which is a better 
model than assuming everything is constant. But in the course for the basic level, you make all these assumptions, okay. And then I will write the expression for the mean. I will not use the t mean mean every time. Please understand because you take it as it is the mean value. It is already integrated over azimuth 1 over 2 pi etcetera. Okay. So, let us write the expression for the thrust. So, your thrust I take it and I will non dimensionalize the thrust expression also. So, I will get the mean value of the thrust which is C of t is thrust divided by rho Okay. This is number of blades putting that there will be a 0 to 2 pi and 1 over sorry there is a n 1 over 2 pi is also there. Then I write this expression. You may say E, I will put a E bar and B take out R outside, okay. And I will have this half rho C A omega capital R whole square. I am just uh, simple because for for simplicity I am writing like this okay into this okay But now I make a further assumption. I will not take bar and B 0 to 1, okay. it is much easier because then you can get a neat closed form expression. So, this is my now I non dimensionalize. So, I have to divide by sorry I forgot to rho pi r square. Okay. So, you look at the term omega r this will go off rho goes off okay. n c r pi r square that is sigma. Okay. So, you will have 1 over 2 pi I will have n r c. So, I will put a half this is sigma this is a okay. times your u t bar square theta minus u p bar u t bar d r bar d psi. Okay. This is my CT expression. This integral I have to do. Oh, I am sorry, 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 0 to 1 integral, yeah, okay, take it 0 to 1, yeah. I put it 0 to 1, otherwise, you put it uh, E to the tip whatever you may correct a tip correction factor 0.97 this is root offset. Okay. So, this is my expression here I made a root is also I do not have any correction I am making it 0 tip I go to integrate till 1. 
Okay. Is it clear? Now I write this u t. I have to substitute r bar plus mu sin psi whole square. U p bar, u t bar. I am writing <laughs> these two expressions, and then I have to theta. Well, okay, I write that uh, theta naught plus theta one c cosine psi plus theta one s sin psi, and similarly I'll write beta beta naught plus beta one c cosine psi plus beta one s sin psi. I write all these expressions. When I take a derivative, beta naught is constant that goes off. Beta 1 c, please understand in this expression, beta naught 1 c 1 naught they are all constants because it is steady state value. Okay, you are writing the flapping motion of the blade like a harmonic series, Fourier series, okay, and this is what it is. These are constants. Later, I will introduce something that these are not constants also, they are time varying. That will come when you have to do stability, then they become, hey, they are not constant, they also can vary. Okay, right now, take it as, now you substitute these expressions here, theta you put it here, beta naught you put it here and here, okay, beta and then integrate the whole thing. Okay, and you write the expression. Now I will give. This is a. I will go back there and show you what is the thrust expression. That's all. Okay, you don't have to do all these things. What I'm saying is, you will be given the sheet how the thrust is obtained. Okay. We basically non dimensionalize the quantities. So, we non dimensionalize thrust in plane force that is why I yes, C sub h, C sub y, roll moment, pitch moment, torque, all of them are non dimensionalized. Okay. And then I give the final expression, which is here I have just given only thrust coefficient what I have written there is this expression and C t is a function of azimuth that is what you asked. I did not integrate 1 over 2 pi 0 to 2 pi that I have not done, okay. but I have taken all the blades also. So, it is like very that is why sigma a over 2 some function of psi. Okay, that is where all this 0 to 1 everything is sitting there. Okay. Now, this this like this you have to do for in plane force you follow side force, longitudinal force, torque everything. If you do I will give because this you do not have to copy because this is something which is uh, I will give you the final expression only thrust expression okay don't bother about the rest of the things only thrust you look at the thrust part averaging over this is what i have done and then my ct mean thrust coefficient is this expression and i have included theta twist also so i put this plus theta twist r over r i have added that okay now this is my ct expression after doing all it uh, it comes out very simple okay but you will find there is no flap term sitting here okay flap term will not be there all right but you will get all the flap terms will come in the side force and other things okay that we will worry later i want to just look at it 
only this part. If you set mu, that is the forward speed. So, please understand my C t thrust coefficient is a function of forward speed, which is advanced ratio mu, mu square. Okay. And it is a function of theta 1 s, theta 1 s is we call it that is why cyclic pitch whether you call longitudinal cyclic pitch or lateral cyclic pitch because always that is a confusion will arise. Okay. Theta 1 you say it is the longitudinal cyclic pitch, but the problem is it will be given at 90 degrees. Okay. Later you will understand the relation between this and this because you need to know how flap. Now, if theta 1 s is positive that means, what pitch angle will increase at 90 degree and it will decrease at 270. So, usually you would want on the advancing side velocity is more pitch angle is less retreating side velocity is less pitch angle is more. So, your theta 1 s is always negative please understand when you do actual calculations you will find theta 1 s is always negative quantity. Okay. Now, you see the moment pilot flies forward if he gives a theta 1 s because pilot only will give theta 1 s because he will move the stick forward. When he moves the stick forward pitch angle when the blade comes at 90 degree it will decrease. So, what will happen when the blade pitch angle theta 1 s is negative mu is starting forward speed at that quantity becomes negative that means your thrust will decrease. So, you always pilot will find when you if you are starting or you give a cyclic input forward he will always go down also okay. he will go down. So, they will always increase the collective. So, that collective you increase it so that you maintain that. So, you see if you give one input something the vehicle will. So, this is how these are all very small small terms they look like, but then they contribute substantially in understanding how the vehicle will behave in flight, but simplistically what people will explain is it is like this the very simple if you want to explain you will say this is my rotor disc okay. thrust is like this. If I tilt it forward okay, then what oh because of the tilt in angle the vertical component gets reduced therefore, you have to increase the vertical this is a very you know for. So, whenever you want to tilt the disc there is a reduction in the thrust this is a simple explanation you can give okay. because only when you tilt forward you will you will go forward. So, if this is the thrust you want to tilt it. So, your vertical component decreases okay. but actually mathematically if you want to show this is what is really happening that is the term and then of course, lambda I have used constant inflow. Now, you imagine your inflow can be a function of azimuth. Now, imagine if you put all of them these expressions will become more and more messier.